Okay, the uh, regular meeting of the Honolulu Police Commission now comes to order. Uh, today's date is February 21st, 2018. Time is 2 p.m. Uh, we're here at the HPD headquarters of my station conference room A. Uh, do we have a quorum? We do. We do have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, Chief of Police, report. Um, just real quick, uh, right up front, uh, the Cachola decision was dropped on my desk less than an hour ago, so I haven't had a chance to review the entire decision, um, but there is a 45-day gag order on the decision, so no information can be made public um, for the next 45 days. So just to let you know that it did come down. Um, and now with that, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, um, Acting Major Aaron Takasaki Young, um, and he's going to be doing a general overview of our disciplinary process before we head into the legislative report. Um, good afternoon, Commissioners and Chiefs. My name is Aaron Young. I'm currently the, the acting major for the Professional Standards Office. And this, this presentation is basically just a real brief overview regarding um, internal or administrative investigations um, that either the department investigates or HPC investigates and how this whole process works. Um, until I was assigned to PSO when I was a lieutenant, I just had no clue. And so uh, when I went there for about nine months, it gave me a better understanding of how this whole process works. So hopefully it's a quick um, process ex explanation and you guys can um, understand and digest it and maybe you can take my place up there and I'll do my job. But, um, <laughs> before we begin, how complaints are investigated are primarily of, of one of two ways, yeah? External complaints or internal complaints. When I talk about external complaints, and external complaints like George knows is um, anybody from the member of the public that wants to submit a notarized complaint can either come to the Honolulu Police Department or the Honolulu Police Commission. They'll get it notarized. Um, all ex um, not all, but external complaints are the only type of complaints that the HPC um, investigates. Um, when I talk about internal complaints, internal complaints is basically if a department employee requests for an investigation, they'll write a two from memorandum or report asking for this investigation regarding this administrative possible misconduct or wrongdoing. We also look at external complaints that does not meet the criteria that's investigated by the HPC. So to recap, there's only two ways, yeah, pretty much investigations are started. And that's either an external or internal complaint, yeah. So regarding HPC, HPC investigates in internal external complaints that are within 60 days of the alleged date of misconduct. Primarily what the HPC looks at regarding misconduct is things as officer behavior, attitude. Um, good examples that I get all the time, or probably George knows is, you get stopped for a traffic violation, they said the officer was rude or overbearing. Normally those type of complaints get forwarded to the HPC. If there's anything procedural um, in the complaint, procedural I mean not officer wrongdoing, but it could be amongst our policy. <coughs> Let's just say when you stop somebody during a traffic stop, you didn't um, inform the person um, the reason for the stop. You didn't use your blue lights or siren. Those type of procedural things, even if it's within 60 days, um, HPC will probably forward it to me and it'll be investigated. So HPC, external complaints only, alleged <coughs> incidents within 60 days, and the misconduct is primarily officer behavior or attitude. Yeah. Any questions on this at all? Yeah, <coughs> yeah officer misconduct being uh, primarily behavioral or attitude, is that, um, is that in a law or rule or regulation? Um, is that actually encoded? That's for our standards of conduct, Commissioner Sheehan, that would be a Article 8D standard or conduct towards the public. Yeah, so it'd be a more of an administrative issue. So is that? But, but is that in a policy is what the question is? Is it part of your policy? Or? I'm just wondering, how, who, who decides our jurisdiction? What do you mean, like? Why they only get misconduct and not other things for such. Like, where does that, 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 one, that one I'm not too sure yet, Commissioner Sheehan, yeah. 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 The charter, the, the charter. 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 Does anybody have any questions regarding this at all? No? Okay, moving forward. What does HPD investigate? Mm -hmm. External and internal complaints. 
Um, it's either investigated by my office for administrative reasons, PSO, or depending on the type of complaint, it could be referred to the division. Um, so your question is, what does a division investigate or versus what PSO investigates? PSO primarily investigate things that would possibly have serious alleged misconduct violations. Good examples are, um, unfortunately, you see news stories of officers getting arrested. That would be primarily PSO. I wouldn't send that down to a division, yeah? Things that a division would investigate could be um, the incident didn't occur within 60 days, officer attitude or misconduct, um, poor, be or poor judgment behavior, that would get sent down to the division. Um, if a person complained that the officer went to their call for service, didn't initiate or make a report, those things that the division can handle. But normal, yes. I'm sorry, does PSO, does violations, does that stay with you until resolution? But, um, with your, with so in terms of when it stays with us in PSO, we investigate the whole entire incident. Right. Um, when it gets disposed of, we'll go through the next couple of slides and we'll try to go through the chain okay. of how it goes. Okay, yeah, Thank you. Um, we also, PSO also investigates, <laughs> PSO also investigates all HPC conversions. And what that means is um, when you guys hear investigations completed by the investigators, and if you guys, if you guys decide this is a sustained allegation, and it meets one of you guys' criteria, and I believe per your rules and commission, um, there's charges of partiality, discourteous towards the public, overbearing, excessive force. That whole packet of report will get sent to my office. When I get it, what we have to do is convert what you guys sustain as the allegations into our department standards of conduct. So whatever you guys are sustaining in terms of the officer did or didn't do, we're gonna convert that into our HPD standards of conduct. So PSO handles all HPC conversions. Any questions with this? No Mr. questions. Over the years we've been trying to coordinate what is not sustained, what is sustained. I know that there is kind of a, it, it doesn't mesh up, what we have doesn't mesh up with what you have. So uh, I, I know that at the last uh, uh, report from the executive director that you guys are trying to do that. Are you any closer to Yeah, that? so I think your question is, you guys have, um, I guess, different charges, I would say, than what our SOCs or standards of conduct. So charges, I mean, like if you sustain an allegation that an officer was overbearing, your guys' HPC charge would be either overbearing, discourteous toward the public, and so forth, yeah? When I initially came over here back in December 24th, um, those are one of the things I looked at. When I looked at the wording of your guys' HPC charges, it pretty much mirrors or is similar to our wording and our standards of conduct. Mm -hmm. For instance, when you guys talk about partiality, the verbiage is pretty much similar to our standard of conduct regarding impartial attitude. Your guys' verbiage regarding uh, conduct or overbearing conduct is pretty much similar to our overbearing conduct verbiage. Yeah? Um, some of the things may not be necessary, and we can talk to the chiefs about how to help make the process more efficient, but it may not be mirroring HPC charges exactly with our SOCs. And the things that it came about was, I talked to George maybe about early in February, and one of the things we're trying to work on is, when we get the HPC conversions, um, there are times where when I looked at the summary of complaint, or I believe it's the HPC 21 form, I, we weren't exactly sure what was the allegations raised against the specific officer. It basically kind of clumped it into one big alleged incident, not specifically at this point in the traffic stop, you're rude and overbearing when he talked to me in a sarcastic tone. It was basically a big open-ended um, allegation. So in talking to George, when PSO charges officers with allegations, we try to be a little bit more specific in terms of during the traffic stop, you were rude and overbearing when you did yada, yada, yada. So after talking with George, those are some of the things we're trying to align. So if I kind of know what the allegation that you guys sustain and what is the connecting HPC policy or charge that would help us streamline the process, Commissioner. So, yeah. Along those lines, uh, Major, w would it be helpful to you if our categories, you know, that that we 
have our, our, our menu of uh, potential forms of misconduct uh, that can result in a sustained complaint were harmonized with your state with the department standards of conduct so that we were comparing apples to apples I would say not necessarily because all I need to know is if we raise specific allegations, like allegation one, two, and three, if I just knew what allegation you sustained and what charge this applied to. Um, so if you said if there are charge. Yep, you're gonna see in the future cases, we're already started doing it, they're gonna be bullets now. You're gonna see a bullet that that's what he wants. Very specific allegation with a bullet. You'll see the scenario as to what happened then below it, you'll say the following are the allegations. You're gonna see a little bullet that's a very specific allegation that he's going to use to convert. Yes. And you'll see it in future yeah. cases. And so how, how that would help is help. if you if say say during the traffic stop you had five different allegations. Um, the officer was rude and discourteous, gave a sarcastic, sarcastic tone when they said this, they didn't tell me what happened, um, they left abruptly and curt. You would have three different bulleted allegations, yeah. And all of that, if we kind of knew we sustained allegation one and two for this HPC charge, partiality, conduct to the public, yada, yada, yada. This one we didn't sustain. When I get it, I would kind of know what charge you sustain because that charge and the verbiage and the rules is basically the same or similar to our SOCs. So I think it's a matter of maybe not necessarily tweaking with, and that's my opinion. I mean, I mean beyond my opinion is not necessarily tweaking the charge language, but rather making the allegations more clear and specific. Clarity. Clarity, well, correct. Clarity. And my thinking is, you know, I was once an officer, you know, we've all made mistakes. If I got an allegation and it said I was rude and discouraged during the traffic stop, I'll be like, okay, so at what point? You know, was I, was I rude when I talked to the person or what did I specifically say? Yeah, because if you kind of just raise a general, uh, general allegation, I think that answer that you're going to get is a general statement from the officer. I, at least in my view, I, I think what you're suggesting is <coughs> readily doable. It's readily doable. Because when we, when we sustain uh, a complaint, we know why. Yes. I mean, we, we know what the conduct was, at right. least as it's reflected in, in uh, the investigative report. Correct. That is uh, prompting that conclusion. Correct. So it would, it would be easy it to would specify. It would be easy. And like I said, if the whole process of... Um, Administrative investigations is to correct uh, behavior. Yeah, sometimes the incidents occur, say like in March. By the time you guys HPC finishes, you guys ruin. By the time each we get it to convert, and by the time the ARB decides, it could be months to a year. And it, I don't have kids, but it could be like my dog did something wrong, and then they don't get disciplined until a year later. They, they, you know, they're not gonna know. <laughs> so the whole thing is, if we could make it clear and upfront, what is the allegations, and when we receive it from the PSO end. We kind of know what allegation and what specific HPC charge that belong to. I think that will help streamline this process a little bit faster. And you'll be seeing that, I don't know if the next basket, we're doing it right now, all the new cases. So you'll be, you'll notice it right away when you see it. Okay. Yeah. Any questions at all on this? Okay. Um, sorry, so going back to yeah, HPC conversions, um, dispositions of administrative investigations. So, when it comes to PSO cases, yeah, PSO cases raises um, policy violations in which the, dis, the, dis, the disposition or disciplinary recommendation is based upon the Administrative Review Board. The Administrative Review Board is comprised of the two Deputy Chiefs and the six Assistant Chiefs. <coughs> so anytime PSO does an investigation that warrants their decision making, it's gonna go up to the ARB for review and recommendation. ARB hearings are held twice a month, yeah. Um, all of the ARB reviews, they're gonna make a recommendation, whether it's a disciplinary action or not. And when I say disciplinary action, per the collective bargaining agreement, it's either written reprimand, suspensions, and discharge or termination. Yeah. What, what are the other ones? Wait, Sorry. You said that there are uh, written reprimands. Is there something else besides suspensions and uh, discharge? There's a 384, which is basically like a verbal counseling. Three, yeah. Correct. And you don't count 384. That's okay. not considered uh, discipline. discipline. That's just a like a documented verbal counseling. Got it. The recommendation is uh, made to whom? The chief. 
So that's final decision then? Then it goes right. to the chief. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the chief will concur or yep. not concur. Thanks. That's for your cases that have to be heard by the ARB. Cases that get sent to the divisional level, like Manini kind of thing, I mean, I'm not saying Manini, but like, I know on the ledge report, you guys seen the court attendance. Yeah, court attendance, right? Court attendance are things that the divisional can handle, but the question is, can a divisional element issue discipline? The answer is yes. Yep, the answer is yes. Can they issue a treaty for uh, verbal counseling? Yes, they can. Can they issue a written reprimand, suspension? Yes, they can. Sorry. But if termination, terminations, that's going to have to be chief of police. But I'm sorry, written reprimand, suspensions, they can make a recommendation to the chief via divisional and she concurs or not. So I'm sorry, uh, the, you, it, if, it's a, if it's in the division, then who makes the call? What's the mate? Is the it a commander major? of the division. Commander of the division. Yeah. But if they're recommending discipline, that always gets forwarded up to the chief. I Any agree. type of discipline, written reprimand, suspension, and terminations, all gets forwarded to the chief. I understand. Yes. Yeah. And, and these cases for the offenses, how many are grieved by the union? I don't have that specific number. Um, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's their job, you know. Yeah. yeah. But secondly, of those officers who are disciplined or uh, at, at least have the offenses or misconduct or whatever it, it might be, um, highlighted and, and brought to their commanding officer or to uh, you know to the commission. Um, how many repeat offenders are there? Is there a percentage of that that, would, that, that, they've got the warning and they learned their lesson, or that one I would have to research. So that one, I it'd be interesting to see if somebody got the word or not. We do have repeat offenders, but that is a very small number, a very yeah, small okay. percentage. Any other questions regarding the disposition? So just a quick flow chart. Uh, HPC investigations. It starts with an external complaint notarized statement, it goes to the HPC if it meets their purview. From there, if it gets sustained, it comes to PSO for the conversion. Once we finish with the conversion, it goes to the ARB for a review and recommendation, and the disposition is decided amongst or agreed upon or concurred by the chief. That's the whole process for HPC conversions. When it comes to HPV investigations, we do both external and internal. It comes to the department, whether PSO or it gets farmed out to the division. From there, either the ARB hears it or the division makes a recommendation, discipline or not. And if discipline is recommended, then it goes to the chief. Any questions? Clear as mud. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, if, um, so where in the flow chart? Does, I guess, it's, is it at this disposition where the chief would make a decision to refer it to an outside agency? Is that, like if there's criminal conduct that's alleged, it, it, does it necessarily, or is that a different system? Um, at any time, I mean, it, there's really no process per se. I think um, it's on obviously on a case-by-case -case basis and it depends upon um, the whole, I guess, uh, you know, totality of all the circumstances. And usually the deputies and I will have a discussion and, um, you know, we'll, we'll make a decision for that. Usually, I mean, that type of thing isn't going to be something that I do on my own. Um, I'm going to get input from my deputies and then we'll go forward from there. This is strictly administrative. Yeah. I see. I see. Yes, 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 yes. Any questions? But, the, but that is a good question. If Chief, if you think that it should go, for instance, to the FBI right away, it's done in any part of the process, right? Correct. It does. Yeah. It can be done immediately. Like. Well, and the other thing is too, and I'm sure that you know, um, Aaron will probably will touch on this, but remember now, you've got criminal and you've got administrative. Right. So a criminal violation may go to could go to state AGs, could go to uh, um, the U.S. Attorney, could go to FBI, whatever. But that administrative investigation is still going to stay with HPD, and HPD PSO will still investigate that administrative investigation all the way through. Yeah, because yeah. it's two different tracks, two totally separate yeah. tracks. Yeah. So yeah. just just think about it. You have a crim track, and then you have an admin track. Yeah. So they're both going to go their separate routes. And you be a former prosecutor, you know it's going to go right. trial, discovery. But administratively, more times than not, we're running things concurrently. Yeah. If we do have a connecting criminal case to an admin case, a lot of times we may have to wait until 
criminal indictments start going. And the reason is, is if administratively we serve the officer the criminal allegations, it's kind of like you're going one step before the other. You know, because the criminal process, process didn't, take a, didn't take effect in that place. But that doesn't mean administratively we still can talk to witnesses, talk to the complainants, gather info. We're not just sitting and waiting. It goes concurrently until a certain point where we have to stall and wait till the criminal process takes effect to a certain point and then continue. Yeah. So this is just admin. But like the chief explained, it's two separate things pretty much going, um, going on concurrently at the same time. Is there any questions, sir? Yeah. Any more questions? Oh, and that, thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Okay, um, so that brings us to the legislative uh, disciplinary report from 2017. Um, just a, a note on this. <coughs> It appears like there's a lot of entries. There's actually 88 entries, but um, just keep in mind that back in 2014, the legislature legislature passed a bill that says that we cannot take it off of this report until it's finalized, whether through arbitration um, or the, the basic the grievance procedure. So. The, out, out of these 88, 40 or 42 of these are from previous years. Um, some could go back all the way as far as you know, like 2005. So actually, in 2017, <laughs> there was only there was 43 officers who were disciplined for 36 different occasions. Okay. Any questions on the chief on the uh, legislative report? I guess part of the legislative report is how some of those bills that you folks are passing. Yes, we do. Um, there's um, most of the bills that were uh, the ones that were actually, um, you know, as bump stocks, obviously were, um, you know, for that. And then uh, the post standards were monitoring that. And I think uh, we discussed that last time. And the reason I know some of the neighbor islands are opposing it. But our stance here at Honolulu is that, you know, we don't have a problem with having any standards because we think that any state agency and or city, any other county agency would need to rise to our level of standards. I mean, for our hiring, for our um, training, um, and anything else. So, I mean, we really don't have um, an issue one way or the other. If the state wants to create, um, a, you know, a, a post standard, then that's fine. But obviously, it's, it's you know, it's going to be a while because it's a monetary issue. How are they going to do it? Especially when you have it statewide, or you going to have dorms? Where are you going to have the academies? Who's going to be teaching? I mean, there's going to be a lot of issues, um, and that falls with the with the state at that point in time. Um, obviously, the medical marijuana, we're opposed to um, allowing officers to partake in medical marijuana while they're on duty. Obviously, we don't want that. I don't think anybody would want an officer coming to their house or making an arrest or using deadly force that might be under the influence of, of marijuana. Um, um, that's, I think that's, I'm probably missing a few. We have, yeah, we're actually, uh, yeah, so. Um, if you have any questions on any of them, no, you, you had the, the last time you had the uh, printout. Uh, right. Can you kind of keep us abreast on sure. that? Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Update. I know. I know it, it moves mile a minute up there at this yeah. point in time. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Levinson. Yeah, I know that the uh, that House Bill two zero seven one, which would establish a law enforcement standards mm -hmm. board, is having its third committee hearing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, does the department intend formally to take a position on the bill? No, we're not either opposing it nor are we uh, supporting it. We're just whatever they come out with is we'll, what we'll abide by. Because we don't see that it's going to have any, uh, really any effect on us, um, on the Honolulu Police Department. I mean, this is a state function, yeah? So, um, the, uh, I think it would probably have more effect on the other state agencies, um, depending on because we're not going to lower our standards to uh, as far as our training standards or our testing standards. Um, so um, I, I think that, like I said, it's going to have the least, and I, I really can't see any effect that it'll have on us. It may lower standards for everybody else, but we will still abide by the standards because the way it's set up on the mainland is that you have like a post-academy where you go and you pretty much learn like generic type of things, yeah. 
um, and then you at that point can go to whatever city that you're going to be hiring at and then you learn their uh, policies, procedures, any specific um, laws that may apply to that city. And so for us, I mean, if they have a post, then that's fine. But then when they come to the Honolulu Police Department, it's not like we would do away with our academy. We would still have to have an academy because we would need to train them at that point in time if it means that they have to have additional training for use of force or they have to have additional training for um, specific policies and procedures of the Honolulu Police Department, then that way, I mean, basically what it would do is it would shorten the academy that we would have um, and would probably assist us in that way. Um, but other than that, I don't see any effect, um, any ill effects that it will have on, on us. Well, actually, uh, I, I wanted to ask you about mm. uh, House Bill 2071 because I, I read it, and the part that I thought was uh, interesting was not the training aspect, but that the board would be given the authority to investigate where there is reason to believe that a law enforcement officer does not meet the minimum standards for employment mm -hmm. and to conduct an investigation, uh, which may or may not be duplicative of what, it, what happens at PSO. Um, and it may be a good thing that there could be an outside agency doing the investigation of HP officers, or a, a bad thing, I'm not really sure. And the second thing that I wanted to talk with you about is the, the concepts that this board, this state board, would have the authority to establish procedures and criteria for the revocation of certification issued by this board. So there would be a state agency with administrative rulemaking authority under Chapter 91 that could fire HPD officers, essentially. Could say, you don't meet the standards for certification anymore, leave. And would that be uh, disruptive to HPD? Would that be a problem with the collective bargaining agreement? It could possibly be with the collective bargaining agreement because they, but, but I think it's separate from that because now that what they would basically do is would de decertify the officer. So the officer would no longer be certified to be a police officer in any state agency or city and county agency. But that is after the, um, the the investigation is done using the like I said based on and then they're basing everything on the mainland um, and the way that they do it on the mainland is if that police department determines that um, the officer is based on their whatever is going to be terminated then they can then submit that name and to have it decertified and put on the decertification database no I, I, I yes I, I appreciate that but but here's the scenario that I was thinking of under this law would it be possible that an officer could uh, engage in misconduct that um, the PSO could uh, affirm that misconduct, mm -hmm. that the Administrative Review Board could again say this officer is engaged in misconduct, that the Chief could then say this officer engaged in misconduct, an arbitrator reversed that decision, could then this statewide board step in, conduct their own investigation and say, we don't care about all that past history, you don't meet certification, you're gone. Could they do that? That I, I don't know. I can't answer that question. I don't because yeah, I don't I, know how to set up. Once it, up. Once it goes to arbitration, uh, yeah. if if the arbitrator uh, rules in favor of whichever party, then they can go to court. And in my case, we're dealing with unions. Yes. And that's where the arbitration comes in. But here's what would be a state law, wouldn't that Trump? The uh, collective bargaining agreement? You know that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Of course. Still, I'm, I'm not a labor lawyer, but it is my understanding that uh, um, the NLRB has the any provision of a collective bargaining agreement that is in derogation of state law is void. Um, the, the proposed bill on its face says that it, it doesn't affect rights that have already vested. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a retroactivity prospectivity issue um, that I imagine was of, of interest to the uh, union. Gee, yeah. But uh, I also note that uh, in connection with the process of decertification, uh, the bill provides that any proceeding to revoke a certification shall be conducted by the board in accordance with Chapter 91. And that raised the question in my mind 
since that's where contested case hearings live mm -hmm. in Chapter 91, um, whether uh, a, a, an officer um, whose certification was revoked could then request a contested case hearing right. uh, in, in the manner that that happens uh, before us mm -hmm. uh, and ultimately have the issue resolved that way too. I'm not sure what, what they intend by that. And I but think it could very yeah. well in, involve contested cases. Yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, I think a lot of this bill too, once, I mean, if it is if it is passed that um, there's a lot of procedures that they're going to have to come up with and at that point I believe that we're going to be very instrumental hopefully that you know they would be you know working with all the different agencies to come up with something because um, right now there's I mean there's no lead for this particular state agency that would be doing the post yeah. It, it seems like it's a lot, lot of questions that uh, more questions than answers. Yeah. Yeah. More questions yeah. than they are yeah. on the on the paper, yeah. which uh, is going to take, as you said, uh, a long time. Oh, yeah. I figure five years before they uh, get all those rules and regs in there. To, uh, it <laughs> almost reads like a license to practice. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They, right? Yeah. They can be revoked. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yes. Yeah. So we're, yeah. Like a dentist. Yeah. 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 So we'll we'll probably have a lot more discussions on yeah. this yeah. if it does pass. Right. And, and, and uh, like uh, Chief Mack was saying, the the, the purpose of this bill was to keep an officer going from eight agency to agency, mm -hmm. you know, so if we fire them and then they're hired by, say, some other, say, a state agency or something, you know, I mean, so that was the whole purpose of this, is to keep that from happening. Yeah, yeah. that's, that, and I understand that's probably what it is, and maybe between now and another year or so, somebody comes up with a better mousetrap to yeah. make it look more simpler, then yeah. maybe that will happen. But anyway, more to be discussed. Yes. Thank you, Chief. Anything further? No? Okay, thank you very much, Chief. Uh, move on to the approval of the minutes. Uh, Commissioner Sheehan. I move to approve the minutes for the open session of January 17, 2018. Motion's been made. And do we have a second? Move. I have a second. We have a move and second. Any discussion? Yes. <coughs> I've already discussed it with uh, Aaron, but there are some, <laughs> some corrections that are typos. Uh, at the end of page four, um, It says Officer Omoso, it should have been Officer Naki, uh, and the Deputy Corporation Counsel isn't identified. I, I understand that Aaron's going to Aaron's okay. going to correct that. And then at the, in the second paragraph on page five, again, uh, or the second item on page five, again, the identity of the Deputy Corporation Counsel needs to be reflected, and she's going to insert that. I believe it was Mr. Nomo. Okay. All right, any other corrections? All right, yeah, hearing none, no more further discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, thank you. Uh, now we move on to uh, public testimony. We have two uh, signed up. Uh, the first is uh, Colonel John Bates. Yes, sir. Uh, as a reminder, Colonel, you have three minutes to uh, on your. I won't make it. Okay, thank um, you. If, you, if right you want to, you can have a seat. I'm sorry, see? If you, yeah, if you want. I guess, yeah. Um, my opening comments would have been much different as we, if I were here uh, two weeks ago than they are today. Uh, today, as I'm sure you're aware of the, uh, the Parkland Massacre, uh, just this time yesterday I was teaching uh, Mrs. O'Kelly's class at uh, Sacred Hearts Academy down by YLI. I do a lot of public speaking with the schools. Um, I noticed uh, uh, because of what was on the mind then, uh, the lack of security there. Uh, and I hope that you do too. I've, uh, I've had a chance to uh, speak at uh, Radford High School, at um, uh, Campbell High School, Punahou, and uh, all of these are, because of the fact they are different, what, what, I'm, what I want to say, because I know I'm already pushing for time, is the fact that uh, we need security plans and all of them have to be individually tailored for that. Um, that was horrible, horrible and preventable, what happened in, uh, down in Parkland High School. Um, I'm offering my services. I've been a security guy all my life. Uh, if, uh, if, if you can use me in any way to assess these schools and uh, give you recommendations, I will gladly do so. And I might ask you to put down, if you want to see the perfect security model uh, to go by, Weatherford High School. I spoke with them this last, uh, Weatherford Upper High School in Texas. Uh, spoke with them this last spring. They, are, they have uh, uh, probably the, the very best I've ever seen. 
Okay, break, break. I'm back to why I'm here today. Uh, somewhat out of frustration, but I've served 33 years on active duty in the United States Marine Corps. Six of those last years, uh, I specifically was in anti-terrorism and um, uh, force protection. Uh, my mission in life then was to locate, fix, and destroy very, very evil people. Those people uh, would like to kill me. Uh, they would uh, kill anybody that they uh, possible uh, that would get in the way to keep them from doing so. I was very disappointed when I received from the Department of Defense. I noticed that every one of mine and about uh, at least 1,200 of uh, uh, those uh, dealing like I did, like myself, all of our records were hacked. And whether they were hacked, they supposed at the time they were by the Chinese because they'd been given, sold, traded, or whatever, I don't know. But I know the understanding of the power of firearms. I'm probably um, the only one in this room that has been almost killed by a firearm. I was shot through the chest and through my right lung out the back. I uh, expected to bleed out before I got to the hospital. So I don't take firearms uh, lightly at all. Um, the uh, I'm uh, probably, arguably, one of the most highly qualified uh, weapons guys, uh, certainly in this room, probably in the police department. And I've tried since 2005 to get a concealed carry permit. And I know I, uh, there's three states, New York, uh, California, and Hawaii, and uh, of, that are exceptionally hard to get concealed uh, weapons permits. California, uh, I had to go attend law, uh, law classes uh, they uh, they uh, uh, checked all my weapons, uh, uh, fired them to get uh, registration with the markings of the grooves and the lands and grooves and all the rest of that. Uh, I've been fingerprinted at least 20 times, twice here. Um, I've uh, paid the fee for, for that, but my biggest frustration, Chief, is the fact that I've been trying and trying and trying to get the, as you are the only person that can do that. I've, even, I've gone to Governor Agay, I've gone to um, uh, uh, Attorney General Chen, and uh, finally, this is the first time, and I'm glad to meet you. But I need your help, I, and I and I know I'm, in my frustration, it may sound like that I'm uh, anti-police. Absolutely not. I mean, I've, I've been working with local law enforcement and the FBI pretty much my adult life. Um, uh, I have some very specific reasons, of which that I would gladly talk with you about, but that I would not like advertised even in this room. But uh, I would. Bottom line is uh, I would like to be issued a Honolulu City and County Police Concealed Ferry Carry Firearm Permit or at least uh, acknowledge the one that I currently carry that is current right now. Um, and if not, the one thing I would ask you to do is please, because forever it's been drug out. I've never really, with the exception of one, um, I was told, no, uh, it's not, we're not going to give you one. The rest of the time, it's if you feel like that your life is in danger, call the police. And, and I mean, it's just been a circle. So uh, if you would please either grant me the firearm permit or please very specifically tell me no and tell me why not so I'll know where to go from there. And, and again, uh, if my tone of force, if I'm getting frustrated and excited, I apologize for that. I mean, I love you guys. Uh, I'm, I, I work with the community every chance I get. And, oh, by the way, this is not political. I am not a member of the NRA. I never have been. This is personal. So uh, thank you for hearing me out, ma'am. And I, again, whatever the decision is, but just make sure that it's absolutely clear because I've never gotten that. It's just been in a spinning circle forever. Okay, I know my two minutes are up, and I'm thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank, thank you, Colonel. Thank you for your service. Thank you, Colonel. I uh, just want to thank you for your service. Appreciate that and Semper Fi. Hoorah. Uh, got it, got it. <laughs> and I was very, very envious of your of your expert qualifications. Uh, if, for those of you who don't know, Marine has to qualify every year on a rifle range. So I've also been a weapons instructor for several years. Yeah. Today. Appreciate all your service. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Cheryl Mabin. As a reminder, uh, you have three minutes. <laughs> Don't worry, I will come and see that I won't want to speak to her. I'm going to do it on top of my head. With um, great respect. My name, my name is Terrell Omar. I'm an ADA person by law. 
I'm not being here to raise him. I, I, I like to, to talk about the ADA law, but what I know is maybe ADA law, this kind of prejudice, yeah? ADA in mainland, that's okay, that's happened. The people are safe, but ADA over here in Hawaii, no. ADA is that people think the cop don't care about us. So I have nothing against the cop. I love you guys and respect you guys for the hard work you guys do. But some of the, the behavior ethics is really discriminatory. For example, like when they have a public function downtown, everybody everybody is walking on the road. The traffic is blocked, and I I go on the road. They always I always complain to the to the, the commission about this thing. The car always to do it. They always see coming out. They always come to me and say, "Hey, off the road, you get ticket." Hey, the world is walking on the road, and you see coming out. They always do that. But then I'm, I'm good with some brain. Uh, 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 started, uh, tell me, if you see people, people, people on the road, you can go on the road. So they, they, they will let me go. Is the other the thing that, because I've come and speak now, I was assaulted um, last month, right by the side of the police station, downtown. No, I didn't know what a maze is, but this crazy, because an attorney was involved too, who came to my, my aid. I, I, I was, he, just, he was talking to himself. He just bent down and got the bed and made me. I said, say, you cannot follow a black man back. But what, what he does, he say, everybody's walking in that direction. Then I come in, I, I got her, uh, and I want to answer, and I want to now, and please, I want you to say, you guys are investigating. It's up to the, 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 the I want that my kids to be investigated because I didn't teach them to be spraying on the road, on my wheelchair. I just see that he was praying all over. I didn't know what a maze is. He was praying all over my face. I was praying like uh, two hours at the, I couldn't open my eyes. You know, <laughs> then, uh, I, it takes, but no, and, uh, no one, no one street, and the police station downtown. The people came to my aid. And then they come to the police station. Was right behind the side, the other side of the, street, of the police station. But it takes them one hour and fifty minutes before the first police come come to help me. Then the police the, 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 the was really cool. The, the, and the, and the, and my dad, the, the ambulance. They are, they take the oath to go out. He, he meant their life. But the, the, the guy who come to me, he said, I gotta take this slow, I gotta slow because if I sit and fall, break my leg, then it's gonna get more worse. And I said, yeah, come on. No, I don't need, we're in trouble. All of us need a person to come and be a quiet baby on a 911 call. That is why he takes the oath to, to help people, even if it means to take the crisis life. But don't come and quiet baby. Like, well, did I tell him to come break your leg? Come to no. I, the people come, I don't want to come to my house. I need help. I, I got amazed. Um, but then, then it was, I need to know the answer right now, and I needed to know. And <coughs> what I noticed is, is that any in Hawaii doesn't really, really exist. And if, because that time I had the accident in, in Lanaman, and I heard a lady, she told her I dumb. She told, she, 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 she said, to do, do, do the other police, and yeah, that's the guy, that's the guy. He always take us to the commissioner. He kind of care about you. He told that, that I was thinking, if that thing was a retaliation of me going to the commissioner, but that is what the doctor told me. And the other time, I, I got a fighting in downtown. I went down the police, the doctor said, tell me, don't take the law into your own hand, go to the right of the sword, which I can, I can stand up and grab, I can fight by, by, by the thing. Then I go to the commission, I tell the, the commissioner that, that we're having a fight outside. But the, the, the commission, uh, uh, the sergeant came, it's a lady, I don't know who it is. The lady said, tell me, right, mother, hey, you quiet baby. What do, what do you think? Uh, what do I tell? I can go out and go, then start killing, or I can scrap, okay, but I, I'm more smart. I come to the police, tell him. If it's not a handicapper, I can, I can take a person down. I'm not showing up, but I, I let something fan too. But, but this kind of, see, the, 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 the structure in the body to me, I go to her, but she said, you're a very quiet baby. And the lady in her mind said that, 
I'm gonna tell you what, what, what you always come down to the whole mission. The reason why I do not go through the right authority, that is what I've been taught by my doctor, anchor management. They talk because for seven, seven or eight years, I was in that hospital for, for my ankle because I had an accident. I got my brain and my, I got a head trauma. So I was very violent, that's why it kind of hit up. And that's the thing I face trauma, I face every day. When somebody takes advantage of a child, you are lady, I, I, I don't care. I will, the, your problem is my problem. But I go to the right people, they tell me I'm quite baby. So if I ask anybody, and they, they will, uh, thank you. That, Mr. Mr. Omar, and I, I you guys uh, to do something uh, for the ADA law, please. Maybe they don't understand. Mr. Omar, uh, excuse me if you don't mind. Uh, if I go feel fast, fast I'm all low, 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 okay, fine, English. English, no, I, I'm, 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 I'm a loud guy, very loud, that's what my dog is. No, 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 Oh, is is the the officer about ADA law and you guys and then for and the other thing about the attorney. ADA they, they are doing it to for their for, for their benefit, but not to benefit me. Yeah, I I have most of a more local government chief. Okay. The most of the local government chief. Oh my god. Huh? Per omone per omifongo. For example, the bank down, yes, down. No, 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 let's say far, so I'm going to go for more. I said, look at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, excuse me, uh, commissioners. I, I basically asked them if it was easier for him to explain in Samoan or in English. Uh, and uh, he, he didn't quite uh, know what you know what to say. But he no, uh, asked him a question. question. Yeah, I asked him a question if, if it would help if he spoke with the chief uh, yeah. uh, privately to explain what his concerns were. Uh, in, in what happened to all, all the incidences that he happened with, if you if, if would assign someone to, because uh, uh, apparently a lot of a lot of things that have happened to him that he has concerns of. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. So, um, do you have any questions for him, or Chief? I mean, it might be easier um, too to make sure that we understand you know, if it's possible for you to write everything out, and we can have one of our officers to um, take you outside and you can write. Oh, okay. Um, well, yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks yeah, but um, my, my, my point is that the officer, not the officer is doing a very good, very, um, very good job. But the thing is, they need to understand the difference between me and you and the difference of the 88 person. Why I am 88, that on my mind is, different from you, that I look at you as a, as a kindness. Yeah, the chief, the chief, the local boy, 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 the the I need to know to know what's up with you. And I need to know. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the thank officers you, will take care of you outside, sir. Anyway, I just explained to him to someone that uh, we have a police officer that is willing to take down all his uh, uh, concerns and everything, and yep. that uh, uh, I think we'll his go on from there. English was fine. I could understand much of it. I think it's part of his just yeah, yeah. And that, 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 sometimes it's easier to understand him in some way. So that's not yeah, I, 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 I just I, I, I just wanted to make sure that what you know that yeah. uh, if it was easier for him to explain it in some way. But anyway, okay. Sorry. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have anybody else to uh, uh, public speaking or public testimony? <laughs> no, we don't. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, hearing on. Thank you very much. Uh, we have new business uh, report on action taken executive session, January third. Mr. Chang. Yeah. Well, at the executive session of January third, twenty eighteen, the commissioners approved the executive session minutes of December six, twenty seventeen. So I would like to make a motion to accept the report. Motion been made. We have a second. We have a second. Any further discussion? No. Any corrections? Anything? No. Okay. Thank you. All those yep. opposed? Okay, thank you. All right, next one is the uh, unfinished business, which is the uh, 
uh, election of chair and vice chair. Mm -hmm. We'll open up for discussion at this point. Well, my opinion is we have one more commissioner coming very shortly, right? Which is what date? Yeah. What next, date? Next, uh, next meeting. I'd like to wait for that date for a simple majority. Otherwise, we could tie 3-3 three, three, or we could, you yeah. know, whatever. So that's what I would like to do. Uh, I, uh, I understand uh, where Commissioner Gibson's coming from. Ideally, we would conduct our election with a full complement of, uh, of the commissioner with all positions filled. We haven't had all positions filled now for a very, very, very long time. Um, the last election was in December of 2016. I voted in it. It was my first meeting. Um, I voted, I knew in advance who the new chair was going to be, uh, and that was that. Um, we now have six out of seven. In order for the commission to take action, four votes are required. It takes four votes for a candidate to elect. I think the probability that um, there would be four votes for a single person um, at this meeting is fairly great. Uh, I think we simply can't afford uh, to delay what ought to have happened three months ago anymore. The worst case scenario, uh, if we go forward today, is that the vote is split three to three. In the event that the vote is split three to three, the commission will not have taken action pursuant to chapter, I think it's, it's either 91 or 92, I forget which. In any event, uh, a majority of the of the authorized roster of a board of commission is necessary in order for it to take any action. Um, if that were to happen, um, the chair would not have been replaced, and under the charter, he would continue to be the chair until he was replaced. We would then have another election at the next meeting, uh, at which time, if all seven of us attend, and there's always the risk that seven of us will not be in attendance, that's not uncommon, um, there would be a definitive result. But I think the odds are, are substantial that there will be a definitive result today. Uh, as much as I look forward to Commissioner Alavado's arrival, and I'm confident that she's going to make a substantial contribution to this commission. Uh, I don't think there is much marginal utility in waiting for her attendance at her first meeting uh, in, a, in an informational vacuum to conduct the election. So I would like to see us go forward. Uh, I uh, I second what um, Commissioner Levinson said. I, I think that it's awkward uh, for the new commission to vote the first meeting that she attended. And I can speak from my own personal experience. I think I I have um, I had my own uh, opinion and, and and observations about the police commissioner before. Um, I joined the commission. I've had uh, I've had a lot to learn and a learning curve from five meetings. And I'm I've been thinking about this a lot. And I really believe that um, organizations that performs very well, the um, uh, high performance organizations, 
certain you know, factors and, and, and in it, leadership strategy, their ability to execute and so forth. But I think it is the desire and with the purpose to change and renewal of the organization make certain unit perform well than others and much more sustainable. And so I think I'm, I'm, I'm at a place that I believe if we understand why the change is necessary and, and, and appropriate and, um, and understand that change with a purpose is, is progress. Change without a purpose then is chaos. And I think this commission and all the other commissions served before us has done well under the circumstances back when certain things need to be handled. But at this point in time, we have a new police chief who's done a great job and put in tremendous amount of energy, fresh approach, um, almost reinventing, I don't know, or you know, certainly the police department. And I think for us, the commissioners, uh, there are certain expectations that um, a vision and um, to serve and, and get to the next level is necessary. We can wait, but then half the year is almost gone. There are a lot of things I think we like to do. We talked about in last meetings to be more proactive, reach out to the commissioners and all of that. And the other thing that concerns me is that we need to figure out a way to get out of the Kialoha umbrella. You know, the other shoe hasn't dropped yet, and it will. And uh, we're all commission new, pretty much new, you know, on this, and, and, and on this board. I think it's really important that from optics point of view, and real substance, we need to change. Um, that's my personal opinion. And, um, it's not just business as usual, because that's what the community, people look at us, they think we are. You know, okay. uh, that's, that's my personal opinion. Okay. Any, well, hearing none. Uh, uh, well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a rookie. I'm still learning the playbook. So, <laughs> so you know, whether we vote today or two weeks from now, I don't know whether that makes a great deal of difference. Um, I think that, uh, um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, let's try it today. And if it doesn't work, if it's 3-3, we have, uh, you know, we're all back on, on March 7th. Uh, but I have no... I'm not in love with either decision. I'm, I'm, I'm here to, you guys are going to have to lead me. So, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't make much difference, but anything? let's go with it. No? None? All right, I just have a few talking points, a few points. One is that, um, you know, over the last year, we talked about being inclusive. We talked about being transparent and all that good stuff that goes along with it. So uh, why are, are we not including the seventh member? Uh, you know, we want to be uh, as a group, so I, we need to include the seventh member. Uh, and also, since the, mem the seventh member has to live with whoever is going to be the chair for the next nine months, um, don't you think that uh, that member needs to have a say in, in the vote, whether yes or no? Uh, and She'll be here in a short two weeks. Uh, that, that two weeks come and go really fast. Uh, postponing until the next meeting will allow all commissioners to participate. And so uh, at this point in the juncture in time, we don't have any crit critical or urgent matters uh, over the next two weeks. And uh, you know, whoever's going to be the chair in two weeks uh, will we'll at least have the uh, vote of uh, the, the whole uh, commission. And uh, hopefully whoever that is uh, gets the full support of all, all seven members, all six of us going to vote for the, the chair. 
And I, I just think that including the seventh member, I think, will uh, make it even more, uh, uh, shall we say, uh, solid in terms of the commission. So I, I, I would strongly recommend we. Uh, it's in two short weeks. We'll be there. Well, and, uh, the other, is the other thing is, how many I'm, how many I'm, people are going to run? Right, I'm, I'm not going to run for, because this is not a transaction. <laughs> a vote and a vote. It's going to take somebody at least four or five meetings to catch up and understand the historical institutional history and background. And I've spent a lot of time reading, talking to people, and in all fairness, in order for her her vote to be meaningful and not just a transaction, then in all fairness, we should just give her another four or five meeting time to learn. Honestly, I'm not so, no, I, so I, I, to, I know, for I, somebody to show up first meeting and say, we're gonna vote yeah. is, is unreasonable. That's not even fair to her. I, if you ask me to do that first meeting, when I came over, I said, oh no, I, I have no idea what to do or how to vote. So I just think that actually timing is important because there are certain expectations of this group that we perform and there is a purpose. Unless we believe there is no reason to change, then we shouldn't even vote. We should just stay, stay status quo. So if we are satisfied that status quo is acceptable, then why are we even talking about this. Yeah. That's my point yeah. of view. From what I understand, thanks to uh, Civil Beat, uh, televi or streams, I guess is what right. they're called, uh, the, the meetings, the last three, uh, two, two months of meetings, uh -huh. uh, from what I understand, she's been following along, uh, according to uh, uh, council members that when I had the meeting with a couple of them back uh, this past week, uh, regarding the issues that we talked about, uh, uh, connecting up with the council. And so uh, she's been following it along, and uh, I, I haven't spoken to her in terms of, uh, uh, you know, voting one way or the other. But I, I, my feeling is that uh, for us to be a complete commission, I, I, I sorry believe that uh, two, two weeks is short, and to have all seven of us participate, uh, I believe, is, uh, is, is, uh, is, is a good way to do it. Well, I'm going to jump in here because maybe the colonel is the only one who will understand me, but I was taught a long time ago, see a hill, take a hill. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, it's before us right now. Let's, let's, let's do it. Unless someone else has something to say, I make a motion to take the vote today. Okay. okay. Motion made and second. Any further second. discussion? Okay. Hearing none. Uh, all those in favor of uh, moving on for today, uh, raise your hands. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I guess we'll be open for uh, for nominations. Jerry, nominate um, Commissioner Sword. Um, thank you. But before anybody seconds it, let me let me just say something. Um, last year I didn't seek the, the chairmanship. Um, and this is a speech I was going to do next week, but I, I guess I'll do it now. Uh, I was asked by f a few fellow commissioners to take the leadership role, uh, which I guess they didn't want to handle or something, but I accepted and uh, took the responsibilities and time commitment. I realized the year ahead uh, was going to be challenging, and to be, to be honest, it proved even more uh, that uh, I think that we could imagine. Uh, we all worked hard. And I have no regrets uh, as, the, as the chair on how we came to uh, solve certain issues. Uh, the commission is made up of a diverse group of individuals, and everyone brings different backgrounds, skill sets, and opinions to the table. And that's the way it should be. As the chair, I try to give everyone an opportunity to discuss the issues at hand and try to come up with a consensus. Uh, we have not always agreed. Uh, but I have sincerely appreciated each and every commissioner's passion and dedication to serve our community. So I was going to make this announcement at the next meeting. If we were going to have that, I, I'm not going to be seeking. Well, you did a good job without rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I thought if, if we were going to be tied and have it the next meeting, or if we were going to have it, we all agreed to go to the next meeting. I was going to give this speech, but uh, and, and, and as a you know, uh, I, I will not be putting my hat in the ring for a couple of reasons. Um, uh, uh, one is that uh, since being uh, retired, 
I plan to travel quite a bit. And over the last year, uh, I had to change my plans quite a few times uh, in travel because as a chair, I felt that I needed to be here, and I was here at every meeting. You and I had perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, as I said at the beginning, you know, uh, I didn't seek to be the chair uh, last year and appreciate the opportunity, and uh, we did what we needed to do and uh, to get through the year. Uh, so uh, on, on a side note, I'm, I'll still be here. Um, maybe take a little more trips, as I said. Uh, so um, I'll be still be part of the commission and still be engaged in discussion uh, as we uh, move forward. So uh, uh, with that, I'd like to thank everyone for the opportunity this past year. And uh, I know it's never, it was not, not always smooth, shall we say, uh, but uh, we did move forward and we did accomplish what we accomplished. So. I'd like to make a comment. Um, so anyway, with that, I, 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 I will not put my hat in the ring on the, on the boat, so. I'd like to express uh, from a personal standpoint, Chair Sword, my uh, sincere appreciation of your willingness to take on this role uh, when you did. Um, you did it essentially in a time of vacuum because I replaced the old chair. Uh, and I'm not surprised to hear that uh, becoming chair was not a particularly sought after uh, objective on the commission at that time. and. Uh, um, you filled the breach and uh, uh, during uh, much turbulence uh, and much change uh, and uh, I think you deserve all of the thanks of all of us uh, for keeping the ship afloat. Uh, that said, um, I'd like to nominate uh, uh, as chair for the rest of this calendar year Commissioner Loretta Sheehan. Do we have a second? I second. Okay, for discussion. Comments? Yeah, okay. I only have one comment, but I don't take this personally, but I were hearing aids, and you're going to have to talk louder so I can hear you. <laughs> you're be the chair. Hey, we didn't make that deal. Okay. <laughs> That's two of us. <laughs> I can't hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I, 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 I just want to say to our commission, uh, Ford, you know, I appreciate your hard work and your leadership throughout a very, very tough year. And, and sometimes it's a circumstance. It's not that, you know, there was anything that, that wasn't done right, but to everything there is a season and sometimes a new perspective, a new approach to things under the circumstances could be helpful to this community and the commission. That that is that's where I was coming from. So I want to thank you as well for your service and look forward to working with you. If I may make a few comments, uh, I echo my fellow commissioners in thanking you for your service. I know it wasn't an easy year, and I know that you must you must not have relished the idea of becoming the chair. And uh, you handled the entire year with a great deal of. Uh, grace uh, and everyone thanks you for your contributions especially the people of the city and county of Honolulu I know you occasionally took some hits in the media and they were large they were unfair it, you gave in of your time of your uh, and of your abilities and people don't realize how necessarily how hard you work it's my view that we are completely allowed to disagree um, and that's what makes for good government so if people disagreed with you in the media they were mistaken um, to think that somehow their opinion was better than yours. It's their opinion. So I'm, um, I joined my fellow commissioners uh, and uh, thanking you for your service. It was, it was a difficult year for all of us, but for you especially. Um, I, I appreciate that. Um, my idea, should you wish to vote for me, is, is to, as Commissioner Chang said, to try to usher in a change in the culture of the commission. We have a new chief, we have a new administration, um, and you've been performing beautifully. You seem to be headed in the right direction. Our job is still to uh, guide, advise, and uh, 
criticize and audit and hire and fire. And so what I'd like to see is the, the commission becoming uh, more of a board that, that you would find a way to take advantage of all of our talents, and that's going to be a highly personal decision. Uh, one of the things, for example, we talked about last meeting was the idea of Commissioner Chang just having an afternoon with the major who's in charge of finance to say, so how do you guys do your budgets? Do you just tweak last year's numbers, or do you a zero sum? Do you do a bottoms up analysis? Um, or for her to possibly take a look at um, this body camera issue. And is, at the end of the day, is it going to be financially responsible for us to be pursuing this project? Um, we shouldn't ever do things just because it sounds good. Um, other areas, as I mentioned, everybody in this room has an expertise. Uh, Chair Sword has an expertise in the legislature, in, in uh, being a liaison with city council. Commissioner Levinson is obviously a legal expert. Um, Commissioner Gibson obviously knows the visitor industry inside and out, and we have to be very concerned about criminal activity that affects our, our state's lifeline. Um, Commissioner uh, Grimm obviously uh, has a deep background in um, media training and presenting things to the media. Um, I would like to also change the, the way we view ourselves. I think it, it's time for, what, for us to communicate, and we do it once a year at these, these conventions we have, but to communicate with the neighbor island commissioners, uh, chairs, and see what they think, and what they think in particular about legislation. I think that we should have a discussion about whether we want to or whether we're ready to support a bill such as House Bill 2071. I think we should have a discussion about our presence at the City Council and whether we feel it's appropriate for the selection of the, the chief or the firing of the chief to be put in the hands of the City Council as opposed to with the people, the people who actually pay for the police department. Um, I. I, um, I want to initiate a governance that's more disciplined. I want to improve our, uh, our, ex our investigations. I think there's a lot of room for improvement there. Um, and, and lastly, I, I want to be clear. I'm, I, I, don't, I don't want to be the only person speaking for this commission. I, I'm not going to, and I don't, this is not a criticism of the way past chairs have done it. I appreciate the, the concept of talking with you know, only one person talking and running out there on Baratania Street to answer media questions. But my thought is it'd be far more useful for the, for the community, for the people we serve. If there's questions that the media has, at the end of the open session, th they should be asked right here. And they should be directed at any commissioner you want to talk to. And, it sh and it should be, there should be no hesitation in asking questions. Because as I said, we are allowed to disagree. We are allowed to have differences of opinion because what, what unites us all in this room is that we want the best police department in the country and we want to provide it with the resources and the support and the guidance and the criticism if need be to keep it that way. So that would be, that's my vision and uh, I humbly ask for your vote. <laughs> <laughs> Long vision. <laughs> Okay, any other comments or discussion? <coughs> all right, hearing none, uh, all those in favor of raise your hands and uh, for uh, uh, Commissioner Sheehan to be uh, chair. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Now uh, Thank I think you. we need a vice chair. I would like to nominate uh, chair, uh, rather, ch sorry. <laughs> I would like to nominate Commissioner uh, Levinson to be my vice chair. I. Let's speak, speak bluntly. I've heard the criticism, and I appreciate it that uh, the lawyers are going to take over, and we will sit here endlessly talking about how many angels dance on the head of a pin and where that is in subsection E.2 of the statute or the revised ordinance. And I, I got to remember that one. <laughs> and that is a well-deserved criticism because. Um, Steve and I can get really lost in the minutia. I think it has its role, and I think it's really important, and I think Commissioner Levinson's done a wonderful job uh, on revising Rule 10 and 11. They may or may not agree with us, and Donna Leong might not agree with us, but so be it. They're allowed to disagree. Um, so I, uh, however, I just think uh, Commissioner Levinson is one of the smartest people I've ever met. 
Um, he's also um, uh, very dedicated, uh, has, has, has a willingness to devote time, cares very much about the police department, has endless curiosity, which is something, the thing I really appreciate about him. And he's really fun to be with. So I would very much appreciate, and I will nominate uh, Commissioner Levinson to be my vice chair. Hoping for a second from somebody. <laughs> Second. 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 Too late. He's a second. Uh, okay. Well, um, motion and a second uh, do, uh, for discussion. Okay. Hearing none. All those in favor of uh, Commissioner Levinson being vice chair say aye. 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 Okay. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. We will uh, proceed with the agenda and uh, Commissioner Sheehan will take over and set her agenda for the next uh, meeting, of, uh, which is March 7th. Yeah, March 7th. Okay. okay uh, before we go executive session, we've got one more uh, from the executive officer's report. Okay, as of today, we have 13 cases in house. Last year, this time, we had 16. We have 10 pending, five were sent to PSO, and one was closed by PSR. We have six pending requests for legal counsel right now. And as far as hiring a new executive officer, everything's moved up to the human resources part of the city and waiting for them to give us a date. And they're going to actually have yeah. um, Erin, how, how long does it usually take for them to uh, Depending on what's before us. It all depends on what kind of positions are before us and the priority. Oh, oh in, in the hiring stuff? Mm -hmm. oh. OK, well, hopefully. Erin, who actually <laughs> hires the? The executive yeah, officer is that. Do we have a role in that? Last, the last go around, the commission from the pig. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we, we in the past we have gotten involved in the hiring yeah. of the executive director. But just through a pig. Through a pig. Yeah, through a pig. Yeah. Because that's, it has to be three. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the only only way to do it. No, but to take an action, we have to have four votes. So you do the pig and the pig service interview panel. And the pig provides a report on their selection to the commission oh, I see. and they vote. Yeah. How many candidates have you had in the past? Uh, I think last time we had about 12. Ah. More and, or less. Yeah, and before that we did have uh, a good number as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the delays is when human resources gets the applications. <laughs> it goes from that's really going to delay. That's yeah, one of the big yeah, delays. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. no, we, you'll be doing the interviews. Oh, I see. They have to okay. qualify the Again, depending on who's ahead of us. Yeah, they have to vet the uh, candidates and then we get to. Uh, right, right. Okay. Have we done that four times already? Yes. <laughs> okay. That's all. Anything else, George? That's all. All right, thank you very much. Um, we're now moving to executive session. Uh, Commissioner Gibson. Uh, the following agenda items will be reviewed in executive session pursuant to HRS 92-5. Subsections 2, 4, 5, 6, and 8 to consider the higher evaluation, dismissal, or discipline of an officer or employee or of charges brought against the officer or employee where consideration of matters affecting privacy, privacy will be involved. To consult with its attorneys on questions and issues uh, pertaining to the board's powers, duties, privileges, immunities, and liabilities to investigate proceedings regarding criminal misconduct to consider sensitive matters related to public safety or security to deliberate or make a decision upon a matter that requires the consideration of information that must be kept confidential pursuant to state or federal law or a court order. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's it's moved. Moved. I checked. So, okay. <laughs> any, any discussions? Yeah, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, we're in a uh, short recess before executive session. Uh, sorry, Commissioner Levinson, but we're 18 minutes. Oh. <laughs> 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 I, I, I'm hmm. very careful. Do you? Okay, okay. <laughs> so, no time, in other words. <laughs> oh. <laughs> On the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. Oh, I'm sure you got too. Yes. Yes. Do you want to talk to us up here? Or outside? Uh, oh, sorry. No, 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 no. Congratulations. You know what you want to do, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>